Right. But I guess in some ways, uh, Maori Language Week, the wokeness of all this, the virtue signalling of it at all, is indicative of the wider political context in which we live. And we live in a political context where, to me, your ability to say, I am virtuous, I believe in liberal causes, is more, far more important than whether or not you might actually be struggling for something. Struggling against a capitalist system or against the man. Actually being working class these days didn't, doesn't seem to count for a damn thing as long as you are politically correct. And I guess underlying it, that's kind of what uh, a good friend of the program and oftentimes contributor to the opinion section on the platform app, um, Dr Bryce Edwards from the Democracy Project may have been saying in his latest column. He joins us now. Hey, Bryce, uh, nice to have you with you. How, how are you, mate? I'm pretty good, Sean. OK, I know you didn't say kia ora, good morning, or in Māori. I can say Morena. yep. <laughs> Morena can, OK. Look, I just, I just don't want you to be witch hunted for not saying Marina. Marina? <laughs> Marina? What does that mean? It's morning, does it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. OK. <laughs> I'm sure the people that you think have taken over left-wing politics in New Zealand will all be running around saying Marina and dropping in uh, Maori names and Maori phrases this week like crazy, won't they? Yeah, and uh, I guess I'll make a bit of an effort as well. Why? Um, it's, uh, Why, Bryce? Oh, look. Oh, because it's, um, I'm not very good with language, but it's uh, it's good to use your brain and it's good to sort of uh, shake things up a bit and use some different languages. Um, Spanish, know, well, why not Spanish? Eh? Um, yeah, well, it is meaningful for, for a lot of people. Um, is it? To, yeah, I think so. For Why? Uh, a bit of use of te reo, um, because people have that connection with their past. What? And, well, eighteen uh, percent of New Zealanders are Maori, so I, it's it's therefore significant for eighteen percent of people, right? Yeah, um, and I don't know. It is part of New Zealand's tradition, isn't it? You know, um, no. it's part of this country's um, <laughs> history. So you know, I don't think a bit of uh, te reo hurts here and there. No, okay, and I'm not saying it hurts either. I'm just fi yeah. saying I find it a bit particular. Yeah. Your latest column, which I absolutely commend people. Bryce, Bryce, if you're going to sum it up, I don't know, in, in 15 seconds, what are you trying to say here? That liberal or left-wing politics has lost its way and become more about a trend um, yeah. or an app than a real movement? Yep, something like that. It's the, To understand where we're at in society at the moment, and it is a really strange place, I think you have to understand class politics and you have to understand that the middle class in New Zealand have overtaken or taken over uh, all the major institutions, particularly in politics and the media and education. And it's a kind of new type of middle class. It's white collared middle class. And yeah, they very much have a new project, which is about uh, cultural issues. It's about um, <laughs> things that aren't uh, what you were talking about in the introduction about, you know, the material ways of life, of, you know, our housing, health, uh, you know, money in our pockets. It's more about symbolism. Okay, and it's more about, more about dinner parties with Chardonnay and maybe a couple of lines of, of, of Coke and Greylin and, and Thorndon, right? Yeah, that, that's a big part of it, I think. And so, um, so just more and more we have those... Um, that political class, that um, what I'm talking about in this essay on, which is, yes, on the opinion section of the platform, mm. is about how um, this, this middle class pretty much has um, its own agenda, its own interests, and it's, yeah, it's taken over particularly the left of politics, which, you know, it's not so much a problem when the right gets taken over by the middle class, because that's traditionally, you know, uh, what the, the right is about. But when the left gets taken over by the middle class, um, it's a problem because, you know, it's getting rid of the working class, if you like. And so we've got this funny situation around the world and in New Zealand where um, the left is kind of staffed by the middle class and it tries to appeal to the middle class rather than um, its traditional constituency of lower socioeconomic or working class people. Mm. Is Jacinda Ardern part, uh, part of this middle class colonisation? 
uh, of left wing politics. Of course, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not wanting to, you know, personalise this too much. I mean, you and I are part of, you know, this sort of um, white collar, you know, part of society. Well, no, you speak you, for you yourself, identity. Bryce. I, I would, I would identify myself entirely as working well, class. Yeah, I, likewise, um, I would too. Um, and that's my tradition. That's where I come from. I'm not wealthy, and that's where yeah. I'm more politically orientated towards. But yes, to answer your question, Jacinda Ardern, um, you know, she she's university educated she, um, in, in communications, uh, of course, media communications. Uh, she orientates more to the middle class and yeah. to the kind of politics. And an interesting, and an interesting example of this over the weekend, Bryce, and it's got to be the strangest leadership spill I've ever seen. It's like the left of of the Green Party called. James Shaw outside for a fight and then no one showed up because he's been reappointed as, as leader of the Green Party unopposed. <laughs> and he is middle class, right? He is bourgeois, well, well, the bourgeois well, face I think, of the Greens. Yeah, I mean, the Greens it's in themselves are very much this uh, professional managerial class. They, um, they have some left-wing politics, of course, um, and they kind of want to fix things to some degree for the working class and poor, but they're overwhelmingly middle class. And yes, James Shaw is from more of, <laughs> even more so, um, having worked for, you know, corporate, um, you know, um, strategy roles. Mm. Um, and so, yes, that, that's absolutely the case. Um, there are some people in the Greens that want to perhaps have a bit more of a uh, an orientation to the poor. Mm. And I think those are the ones that are upset with, with James Shaw. Mm. So, Bryce, I, I accept your, your proposition. And once again, I commend the column to people. If we accept that proposition that the middle class, the white middle class or up at the bourgeois, have taken over left-wing politics or traditional working-class politics. Where do the great unwashed go? And I'm going to put forward a theory here. Yeah. Is that they become, or they drift to the extremes, they drift to voices for freedom, and they drift back yep. to Winston Peters and, and maybe to ACT. Yeah. No, this is the great problem, that the working class don't really have anywhere to belong in politics or in the media. Or well, they do. They can education. vote for Winston. They can vote for David yes. Seymour. But, but they can, and that's where they end up. And so we're seeing this throughout the world, that it's, um, it's parties that you traditionally see as right-wing or populist, um, such as Trump. Uh, I mean, the whole Brexit campaign in, mm. um, in the UK was very much about working class people revolting against the, the middle class and saying this isn't working for us. Um, and yes, they get more... And parties of the right are seeing that they have the ability to win over some of these um, these people because Labour parties aren't catering to the working class anymore. So um, they go all over the... All the all over the show, really. And yes, I think you're right that um, some of the, I don't know, um, yeah, Voices for Freedom or other sort of areas that are kind of angry and putting forward uh, some sort of revolt or protesting society to attract these people that are... They're not angry. angry, they've just been abandoned. They don't have other yeah. options. Because of yours, as yeah. you have explained, the Jacinda Ardern's of this world are too busy working on their CVs and moving up the bureaucratic corporate ladder yep. and speaking Maori and patting themselves on the back. Oh, ab absolutely. That's right. They can see, so, many, so much of the society can see that these people aren't really their leaders, aren't really the, you know, well, aren't really their friends, friends I think, is what we're trying to say, isn't it, Bryce? Yeah, yes. I mean, we all get conflicted and sometimes, of course, you know, people will see that, you know, Jacinda Ardern did a great job with COVID and, you know, um, and so forth. But then they look at their housing situation, they look at their pay packets, they look at the price of everything, and that then is a bigger issue. And they don't feel that, um, you know, just a, a bit of renaming of government departments, you know, or, yeah, um, various cultural projects really are doing the job for them, you know, actually mm. improving their lives. All right, Bryce. Is this trend showing signs of stopping anywhere in the world or are we in the middle of a, and I'm not going to say great reset, a reset of where political allegiances are born? I'd also add 
But right. it seems to me the National Party is also trying to be a bourgeois middle class party trying to almost out vanilla Labour at the moment in New Zealand. Yeah, no, I, I can't say I have a great sense of optimism that things are resetting. Um, I mean, the problem in my view is that you actually need a, a left-wing party to uh, better represent the working class. Um, and I don't know that right-wing parties do it very well. Um, and so there's no great left-wing, you know, sort of force. Um, often it's the likes of Trump and et cetera that you try to fill that void, but they actually can't do it very well. So, no, there's no great reset happening at the moment, unfortunately. All right. Um, and I might also add, Bryce, that left-wing is now, it used to be workers, right? Man workers. Yeah. Of course, yeah. with, with the birth of the Labour Party here. But left wing doesn't mean necessarily a working person anymore. It means a beneficiary. And it's a different dynamic than it was in the 1930s or yeah. 1940s or even 1950s. Oh, that's right. And, um, yeah, thing, things have certainly changed and we've got to understand there are those differences. Um, and a lot of working class people actually are well paid now as well at the other end of the, the spectrum. So, yeah. Uh, I, th I personally think that a class analysis of society and politics is very useful, but of course it's, it's never simple, is it? It's never straightforward. Yeah. Uh, Bryce, your feelings, talking about class, the very, very upper class, the ruling classes, uh, the royal family, the passing of Her Majesty the Queen, it seems to me an opportunity for us to talk about the ridiculous mumbo-jumbo fairy tale that is having a monarchy. But, of course, we don't because we all get a motive. We all buy, you know, the 21-gun salute and mom and all that sort of stuff. Perfect time, of course, to talk about ditching the monarchy and the rather archaic um, power structure it represents, but we don't. Yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm a Republican and I think that's our future. Uh, there are pros and cons to the monarchy and for a political system, you do need some sort of figurehead that is above politics and there are advantages to having a queen and king uh, and if we're to replace that, we have to come up with a better system and it's going to be quite fraught coming up with how do we have a president, is it, is, is it someone that's... I think a lottery, to... Bryce. Sure, Just a yeah, lottery a for every five years. Yeah. It's like you with the lotto ticket, you get the chance to be the king or queen for five years. Yeah, that, that has uh, definite merit. Uh, but I don't know how many people are going to agree with you on that. We do need to now have a debate about the, the different options. Um, and do we do it right now? I am not entirely sure. I mean, Oh, do not I stand my... on tradition. Would it be bad? Would it be distasteful? It's the perfect time to have the debate, isn't it? Yeah, I... I Look, I, I'd hope so. I'd like to think so. Um, it might be after the Queen's in the grave that might be the best time um, to do that. I think there's a bit of mourning, and I'm trying to be sympathetic to friends and family who do have illusions in the monarchy by not offending them too much. But, yeah, eventually we do have to move on and realise it is a fairy tale, like you say, and it's ridiculous. Oh, I... I, I... You see, Bryce, this is why I love having the problem. Look, one other thing, seeing I've got you here and I'm running through everything with you, do you reckon we get yeah. rid, of, rid of the mask today and that the emergency regulations fall into a balance on Wednesday and for the first time in two and a half years, uh, this country uh, is normal? Yeah, I mean, the, the numbers have gone down enough to have a big change. Uh, it seems ridiculous to me that we have a traffic light system and we might just abandon it rather than go green. Like, um, and no one really knows what the different colours mean anymore. It's all just a bit farcical. Um, but, you know, um, I'm still going to wear my mask, you know, in appropriate places. Mm. Whether we need some rules about it or not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we do, Bryce. Bryce, always good yeah. chatting once again. I commend your column. I look forward to your next one. Have a great Maori cool. language week. Kakiti ya no, Bryce. Cheers. Okay, Cheers. Bryce Edwards there from the Democracy Project, uh, frequent contributor to the platform. And once again, I recommend to you download the app, the platform app, and read. We've got some good columns and good cartoons. Great columns. Damn it. What am I saying? Good. It's great. Stuff that will change your life, make you see the world differently or reinforce your terrible prejudices.